Hey, good morning, guys. I wanted to just record a service that I've been getting a lot of questions from a lot of you on the book of Revelation, and I'm just going to cover a little little uh, portions of it. But I want you to know it's all good news. That's why they call it good news. Um, there's no bad news in the good news, despite every one of these pastors trying to inject bad news into it. And uh, so I'm titling it The Great News of Revelation. Don't let any pastor put fear in you. <clears throat> and uh, uh, just a couple of things. It's um, because I've been getting a lot of questions, you know, um, the, the great tribulation. Are you pre-trib, mid-trib, old-trib? Uh, what, you know, all these different things. And then, uh, uh, you know, what's the coming of the end of the world? They're fearing this coming apocalypse. And I'll show you exactly what that is. It's actually you entering into the promised lands. You going back to oneness with the spirit, oneness with God, where your clothing is taken off. And you become naked again, just like Adam and Eve were in the garden. In fact, if you didn't have this garment or this this flesh, this seamless garment that was woven without human hands by God in your mother's womb, which was the garden, you were cast out, of the, separated from the garden. <clears throat> and then uh, you went into the dispersion, the many-membered body of Christ. Now you're going to go back to oneness when you when you become naked again and you cast off this garment. Because then they can't see you again, because you, the eternal spirit of God, is within you. And it's the kingdom is not visible, so they can't see you. So it's really not that difficult. And then the other thing I would I would just share with you is uh, often by um, by evangelicals and and different uh, uh, denominations, they use they use it like the God card, like they've got this ace in their pocket at the end. Well, the coming tribulation or you better accept God or else none of that's accurate, guys. <clears throat> all are returning to oneness. Every human being on the planet, all were in Adam, all were in Christ. It's all great news. And they do that at the end. Um, and they use it as proof text. Nobody better add to this book or subtract to this book or else. Well, here's the problem. <laughs> if you grew up with me, I can only use my context. I had no idea how the Bible was putting together. Like from your little kid in Sunday school, you're like, this is the infallible word of God. Well, there's some problems with that. Uh, let me just show you a couple things. So they used, but first of all, Revelation wasn't in the first round of books that was canonized um, in the ecumenical councils in the fourth century when when uh, Constantine got all the, the known bishops of the world to go, what do we believe and put it in a book as if the writers of scripture, they weren't in a hurry to put it into a book, guys. That's what's so interesting. But uh, it was so infallible that uh, the original version was apparently fallible <laughs> because they added different books later. Um, through a very political process. They added Hebrews, they have a revelation. So the book that was actually added that wasn't included in the first round is used as proof text that you can't add anything to the book. And then I'll just show you one other thing, um, which is, it's. I can only laugh, guys, sorry, I'm not trying to, um, but there, there was this thing called the Apocrypha. And so <clears throat> apparently uh, nothing could be added or subtracted until 1885, 274 years after the King James Bible. So Here's you can just look up any of this stuff. The Apocrypha is a selection of books which were published in the original 1611 King James Bible. So in 1600s, guys, when King Jimmy got a hold of this thing, these apocryphal books were positioned between the Old and New Testament. It also contained maps and genealogies. The Apocrypha is part of the King James Version for 270 years until their infallible Bible apparently was fallible again, and they took them out in 1885. <laughs> So don't the word of God, the infallible word of God is not a book in print, guys. It is the it is the bar. It's the seed of Christ in every human being, which is infallible, will not return void, is that seed of God himself. The first seed is from a man <clears throat> that, <clears throat> excuse me, the first seed is from the man. You all came out of your mother's womb. <clears throat> and that is the first birth, the, the oldest, the hairy man, the flesh man, the beastly man. Um, the wandering man, you know, different things, how it's uh, portrayed in scripture. The second man is the Lord from heaven, the speaking spirit. <clears throat> that is the, the anointing of God, the seed of God in every human being, that all of us will return back to God because the seed of God shall not return void, we return back to God. And so those are the two births. And uh, one is one is of a male seed, the other is a virgin birth. From Mariam, Mary is actually plural. And it says, <clears throat> we're all going to experience the virgin birth, meaning this wasn't the seed of a man outside of two, two joined together in physical intimacy. This was the seed of God actually itself. I'm telling you, it brings such peace when you understand this, because I'm not worried about anybody going to this, this place called hell 
all are returning to oneness of God. The, the tribute, the great tribulation, guys, is here when we're in this enslaved body is basically what it says. So anyway, <clears throat> I just wanted to show you a couple of things with that. And then also, um, you know, about the coming, uh, the fire and brimstone, and you better be recorded in the, the book. I'm, I'm going to cover that, but just let me show you a couple of things. I wrote some notes. I wanted to get rid of the, the main questions that I've been asking. Yeah, there's nothing to fear. This collapsing of the end of the world. Guys, the world is perfect. It's orderly. It's, it's going like crazy. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest shall not cease. <clears throat> the earth is your flesh, your heart. But when this flesh is, is taken away, um, guess what? We go into the promised land. And so <clears throat> let me just show you. So if they're using, if there are any pastors coming about, oh no, the moon is red and, <clears throat> and this coming, this coming apocalypse, first of all, I'm going to show you apocalypse is nothing bad. And uh, um, uh, any fear tactic, just dismiss it. It's just garbage, guys. Let me just show you um, because they would also be the ones that tell you fear can't, or uh, the scriptures can't contradict themselves. But let me just go to one John. I'm pretty sure it's in their book, unless it's so infallible that they got rid of one John too. So anyway, <clears throat> let me just start in, uh, oh, let's start in verse 16, maybe one John 4, 16. <clears throat> and we have come to know, we have a knowledge. That means we have personal intimacy and believe the love of God has for us. God is love. Well, love keeps no record of wrong. Whoever abides in love abides in God and God in him. It's interesting if you go look up him. I don't have time here, but it says within you, it's yourself. In this way, love has been perfected among us so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment. For in this world, we're just like him. It says auto again, but uh, and I'm sorry, that's not where it does. It's right up here that uh, uh, God is within ourselves, <clears throat> which is the rod of Aaron that buds all by itself. If you go look that up. All right. So the day of judgment. It's been taught that it's very scary. The judgment's just been, um, if you go look at this, it is uh, basically um, a casting away. You're cast out, if you go look at it, a separation. So you've been separated. What are we being separated at the day of judgment? We're separating from this body of slavery. And we enter into the spiritual realm, into the um, into the promised land, <clears throat> right? That's why you see after the first five books, it says, Moses, the servant is dead. Yeshua enter into the promised land, right? <clears throat> All right. So, but then if you keep going, there is no fear in love. Well, why are these pastors saying fear? Perfect fear drives, the completion of love drives out fear because fear involves punishment. So if they're telling you anything that, oh, you better watch out or else, or this great tribulation, you better, we well, got to get back to God because of he's going to punish you. No, there is, he's love. And Fear involves punishment. The one who fears has not been perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. <clears throat> and so anyway, and then you talk about loving your brother. It's, it's the oneness within you. Brother is, is a Delphos. It's so interesting where we get where we get sin um, is alpha. Delphos is womb. So they use alpha when they like it right here. Um, sin, uncleanliness. When they didn't like alpha, when they used it as a negative prefix, in Greek, the first letter of the alphabet, alpha. Well, when they wanted to put brother together, they used it correctly. So when they said brother, they said from the same womb. One from the same womb is brother, right? A alpha delphos, from the same womb, from the singular womb, from the same womb, right? But when they wanted to make something scary like sin or unrighteousness or uncleanliness, they totally mistranslated it from the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, which was the the portion and strength of God in covenant, the two covenants from Genesis 1. <clears throat> so anyway, that's uh, don't let them use fear because God is fear. And anyone who's talking about coming punishment or torment um, has not been perfected in love. All right. Now, <clears throat> so let me, I just want to make sure I covered a lot of the, the, like I said, the fears that have been sent to me over the emails here recently. It must be, somebody must be getting all worked up on TV or something. Um yeah, Revelation can't be used as proof text to say don't add it because that book itself was added and then they've added and subtracted books ever since. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, yeah, just here. This is the story of two love covenants again. This is the struggle that happens within you. The whole thing is a pattern. If you go look at it, it's the two brothers, the two sons, the two covenants, the two trees <clears throat> that were in the midst of the garden, the inner mat, the inner part of you. One included labor, which was the first birth. The second one is there's no labor because it's God himself. Woman, ladies, you didn't give birth to this because it was a spiritual birth in all of us that happens. 
And that's so all the struggles between you, the first man and the second man, the, the flesh man, the beastly man, and the spiritual man <clears throat> says rival races from are in your womb from their birth. She, the mom called her, the woman giving birth that was giving labor called the um, Benoni, the son of my sorrows, but the father called him Ben Yamin, the son of my right hand. And if you go look all through, through uh, scripture, anytime it says the right side, the right hand, <clears throat> it literally says the power within yourself. So it's a Hebrew idiom. So when you have like the left and the right, and he was, he was, Jesus was on the left. There was a cross on the left and left to the right. Guys, this is the, the two covenants. It's not three guys. It's two covenants because the left <clears throat> was was the first birth. The right the right hand is the birth within yourself. So anyway, I'm covering a lot of things, but it's these rival races of their birth. It's it's the second man, the spiritual man, surplanting um, or taking over the physical man. This first man it, is cursed. It, it says anyone who hangeth on the tree is cursed. It means it withers away. It's not that God's mad at you. He's love. He doesn't do anything bad. <clears throat> he allows you to use the spirit and do whatever you want with it. But in the end, the great news is all shall, the seed of God shall not return void. You, We all return back to oneness. And so the end, the end of the book of Revelation, all these scary stories and everything else, the end is not in warring, man warring, things like that. That's that's happened forever and ever and ever, guys, because, they, because we're teaching separation. If everybody believed in their oneness, that they could have everything at any time, there'd be no need to go get it from somebody else or have to conquer anybody else. Because you know everybody knew they could receive it for free, and the world responds to them. <clears throat> so the end is the struggle where you're separated from the flesh. You've entered into the promised land. You've stopped this this uh, these years of tribulation where we're enslaved to this body, and so you're just it's it's uh, <clears throat> you go back to oneness in the spirit. That's the end. That's the the great tribulation that's over. It's it's just it's like Job. It's the second portion, the second birth of the spiritual birth. You get double. Is this life and the life to come? His nearness, his his oneness with you is for this life and life more abundantly, the second life. <clears throat> anyway, you're entering the promised land. It's just like um, it's just like uh Moses, the servant is dead, is the exodus, is the separation from the flesh, where they, if you go look at they ate unleavened bread. <clears throat> well, what is that? The first covenant, when the blood and the water mix in the woman, in the garden, the holy place of the woman. Guess what? <clears throat> the finished work, the candlestick, which is seven flames on it. The finished work of the candlestick is the seed cast out of the man, and then there's a rest. And then guess what? After after 40 days, which you see the 40 all through it, it's, the, it's representative of the Hebrew letter Mem, which it says it's the mighty waters of her period, the flood waters cease, and the embryo starts in 40 days. And guess what? She gives birth <clears throat> in 40 weeks. And so that's why you always see the 40, 40, night and day, night, you know, 40 days, 40 nights. Those are the two births again, guys. 40 days is what you can see. 40 nights was where there's no effort involved, the second birth. So it's not literally like 40 days and 40 nights. Guys, you got to understand Hebrew imagery. <clears throat> They're talking about the first covenant you can see, the second covenant you can't see. That's the 40 days, 40 nights, because days is an interest. I've covered that a lot. It's just man in the in the finished work of the, the womb. <clears throat> Yam. So anyway. That's all this is. So when they when the Moses the servant is dead, <clears throat> the showbread is doesn't show. It's unleavened. You can't see this bread or this 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 life within the first covenant. You can because when the seed is cast into the woman after forty days, the, the her flood waters stop, which is what all the Noah's about. The story of Noah and the ark and two by two going into the ark. <clears throat> and then the second one is on the eighth. Noah comes out. So again. Don't let anybody scare you like it's in the days of Noah <clears throat> that God flooded the whole world and everybody and everybody died except for Noah. So you, <laughs> I live in a highly evangelical town. So it's it says, uh, stu you see bumper stickers that say things like this. Um, <clears throat> uh, in case of rapture, this car will be unoccupied. Have they not read their book? Of course not. They just read some fear mongering pastor. And so because if, if it's just like the days of Noah, who was left? The good guys were left. Noah was left. Everybody else was taken away. It's not talking about that, guys. It's talking about the floodwaters of the first man is, is goes away. So if you have in your period, that means that seed didn't take place. It's not, didn't form an embryo. It's not life. It's all the floodwaters are. So 
But when Moses, your servant, is dead, they partake of the unleavened bread. And so this bread, you can't see. The first bread became showbread. The woman started to show her pregnancy. The second bread doesn't, you can't see it. It's in the secret place. It's in the hidden place. I'm covering all, a lot of imagery for you guys. You can see that it's the same pattern over and over and over and over in scripture. All right. So let's get to Revelation 1 and then Revelation 20 just to, <clears throat> but I just want to show you nothing to fear, guys. It's actually the greatest news. We separate from this world of tribulation, go back to our oneness, but we've experienced God. God became flesh and dwelt in us, is what it says. It doesn't say among. It says in, so the preposition n, in, and it says he dwelt in us. But when did this happen? From the first man. All right. So this is the revel <clears throat> revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants, which must soon pass. It made it known, meaning I've personally experienced by sending his messenger, his servant, Yohanan. All right. <clears throat> so King James says the apocalypsis of Jesus Christ, and they make it something bad. All right. Remember, Adam and Eve were naked, meaning they weren't clothed in flesh yet. They partook of the, the tree of the knowledge of good with labor, and we were expelled out of the garden, clothed. Now we can see the eternal body of God. In, it's the, the, God, the kingdom is invisible, guys. Your real you is the eternal spirit of God. This is the temporary you. This is the, the this is the tabernacle walking around roaming in the wilderness. So the revelation, I want to just show you this of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the anointing, not the first anointing of the of the finished work of a man in the woman. This is the anointing within everybody that saves everybody from this body of flesh. And this is the revelation or the apocalypse. <clears throat> so show you it's not bad. Properly uncovering, unveiling. Well, this is the veil. If you go look at all the imagery, the first marriage, go look at uh, Lot and the different stories, right? The first one was veiled. Second one is unveiled, the beautiful one after after seven. <clears throat> Apocalypse is really interesting. Properly making naked. <clears throat> what does that mean? You're uncovered again. Just like Adam and Eve were naked, now you go back to nakedness, meaning you're no longer in this body of flesh. That's all that is. It's the great news. All right. And you will come to experience this from this message or this word within yourself. It's really interesting. It's auto here. The message within yourself, his servants, not capitalized. It's the within you, the, the, the message, the servant, Yohanan. And if you go look at this, Hebrew origin, Yohanan. <clears throat> and it's really interesting. If you go look, it's Yad, Vav, which is man. Chet is the eighth letter and Nun, Nun. So the finished work of man in the inner chamber, which is the seed above all seeds. There's the seed of man, and there's the seed above all seeds, which is the anointing of God within every human being. So it's the seed of the seed above all seeds, the seed of God himself, not from your physical father. This is from your earthly father. That's the seed cast into the holy place. The seed of all seeds in the upper room is the seed of God himself. The finished work, Yod, Chet, in the inner chamber of man, Vav, Vav, Chet, Nun, Nun. All right. Now let's just go. Let's finish this up to show you this isn't uh, this isn't scary. So I just wrote Revelation one one the unveiling of Jesus Christ. You are separating judgment. It's uh, the judgment of God means you're separated from this veil. You are separating from this veil. You are being separated from this seamless garment that God wove woven without human hands in the, your mother's womb, and you became clothed and cast out of the garden. But there is a return. It says where you become naked again. And it's between the two cherubs. It's right up here in the holiest of holies. And that's, that's the rod of Aaron. It says the sword that finishes this work within yourself, not husband and wife in intimacy. This is God and man in intimacy. And the seed is from God himself. Okay. All right. Now let's just get to Revelation 20, because I want to just cover this, uh, the torment and forever and ever, you know, it's pretty interesting. I just, somebody showed me uh, this guy here in Colorado Springs and he's like, wow. You're going to be tormented forever and ever. Now, what a great thing to teach a little kid. That's the only way they can believe some of these nonsense stories is to get them before they're seven while they're in Alpha and Theta. Come on, guys. This, this is great news. God is love, and the world is beautiful. It's orderly. It's perfect. <clears throat> the revelation is learning that oh, all will partake. All will go through the fire. And I'll show you. The fire is beautiful. The torment, it, it can't be something bad. Remember I just showed you in 1 John 4? says there is no fear in love and he is love god is love and god he's in us but perfect love dries out fear because fear involves punishment i think king james says torment let me just look real quick 
uh, 1 John 4, 18. We'll go see what King, King Jimmy has to say about this deal. Uh, maybe even New King James has it that way. 1 John 4, 18. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so even New King James, there's no fear in love, but love, perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. Well, if you're going to say in Revelation 20, there is torment, then one of these is wrong. Okay. All right. So, and then he's talking about the, the great judgment. Judgment, guys, I'll show you, is the casting off of the flesh. It's the casting away. It's the separation. <clears throat> so, anyway, I just want to show you that this is good. The, all Everywhere it says torment, fire, death, Hades. <clears throat> it's all good. All right. And so I'm going to start uh, maybe here. Um, all right. They marched across the broad expanse of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints in the beloved city. But fire came down from heaven and consumed them. And the devil who had deceived them was thrown into lake of fire and sulfur. I'm not going to get into devil and deception, but you can go look up those words. It basically says the wandering around. The devil is the wandering around going to and fro on the plane where we get planet. <laughs> That's literally, you can go look it up yourself. And the devil who had deceived them was thrown into lake of fire and sulfur, in which the beast and the false prophet had already been thrown. They will be tormented day and night. This was this pastor in Colorado Springs forever and ever. Oh, go away, fear-mongering pastor. That's horrible. That's not good news at all. But they here's what they do. It's like, it's only us. We've got the God card. And uh, see, so you're all wrong. No, 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 no. E even, you know what? You will be pleasantly surprised that, that <laughs> everybody's going to be there. So, all right, let's just look at this. <clears throat> First of all, the devil who had seen him was thrown into Lake of Fire. Let's Because I think most people have this idea of Lake of Fire is really bad. Well, let's look at this. Pure. It's from the Greek word pure. Fire. Heat. All right, fire in scripture is used figuratively, the fire of God. It transforms all it touches into light, pure energy, God himself, and likeness with itself. Now, some of you already should go ding, 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 ding. All right, the devil was thrown into the lake. Uh, actually, you know what lake even is just, it's really interesting. It's just the safe harbor. Everybody has this image of a lake of fire. It's horrible. Uh, I should just show you this. Pro and this is so funny too, because it, it'll say from Homer down a lake, um, probably from probably. So they base all of your fear mongering scriptures on probably. All right. It's probably from Lehman and it just means a harbor port or haven. Oh, haven's good. A harbor. The harbor was where you could get out of the storm, guys. So this is where this, this you can go into this safe haven and harbor of purification all right and it says it it literally <clears throat> transforms it touches into light and likeness of itself let's just take their interpretation of the devil as something bad well the devil is thrown into this safe safe haven of fire which is the fire and purification of god and if we're going to read this transforms all it touches into light and likeness with itself. So even if it was bad, it says now the devil is transformed into God. Weird. So don't let me scare you about the devil and anything like that. All right. It's actually good. Let's see you wandering around on the planet and you're thrown into this final safe har harbor. You're separating from this veil and returning to oneness. Let's look at sulfur. <clears throat> all right. Sulfur, Theon, very close to Theos, by the way, guys, which is, which is always interpreted as God in the scripture. Properly, sulfur, brimstone, smoke, and burning, sulfurous, named for the sulfur smell. Uh, figure it to be the fire of heaven. Well, I just showed you what the fire was heaven. Bringing down God's judgment to display his unstoppable, awesome power. Judgment is God's separation. He's separating you from this body of flesh and going into oneness with itself. But if you keep going, it literally says this. Equivalent to divine incense. Divine incense, godly incense, the godly burning because burning brimstone was, received, was regarded as having power to purify. This is the lake of purification again, the safe harbor. You're going to be purified and touched and turned into the same image of God himself. Well, of course, the seed of God does not return void. That seed of Christ, Jesus Christ, uh, you become naked. That seed is implanted in you. Now the apocalypsis of Jesus Christ. Yes, but you go back into oneness of God. And the only thing left, guys, the, the fire, if you go look at all the imagery in Scripture, it says wood, hay, and stubble. That wood, trees, hay, stubble is always equivalent to man, the flesh man. What's left? The things that can't burn, which are silver, gold, precious stones. Meaning the eternal you, the, the, the anointing of Christ in all humanity, 
is the real you and it's pure and it's perfect and it and uh, it cannot go be burned up it's it's not temporary it's forever because those would count pass through the the fire of god all right so <clears throat> that's fire and sulfur so fire was to purify and it, it turns everything it touches into itself sulfur was to purify and uh um purifies the beast and the false prophet had already been thrown there <laughs> I'm not going to get into beast. So it's all the same imagery, guys. So, and they will be tormented day and night. So the the idea here is, is uh, us going to and fro, we're going to be thrown into this safe harbor and haven of purification. So what's this torment? Well, one John says we can't use it as something bad because then not, we're not, haven't been completed in love yet. So what is torment? <clears throat> all right. Bonsonizo, to examine. Um a tormenting trial, torture. Oh, come on. Here's literally what it says. Originally, a black silicone-based stone used as a touchstone to test the purity of precious metals. Remember the real you, like silver and gold, all that's left. This is going to get burned up, purified, guys. This is we. The separation or judgment of God is when we separate. The revelation of Jesus Christ is when we become naked again. We go back to pure spirit where... We're pure energy and light and likeness of God himself. And so this is to test the, the purity and precious metals of silver and gold forever and ever. Meaning your resting place, guys, is, is oneness with God himself. There's literally no fear. And we need to start seeing people and teaching them who they really are. Know ye not that Jesus Christ, the anointing that saves is in every human being on the planet, and God himself is within you, that you're not separated from God. No one is separated from God. They ever They never can be. They never will that's good news. And guess what? You can have anything you desire by simply laying a hold of it. All things have been given to you for life and godliness. His nearness, his oneness with man is for life and the life to come. It's for both covenants, guys. And it's all pure. It's all love. And so once we start teaching people they're true, not separated from God, that they're one with God and they can receive anything, guess what? Now this elusive thing of peace and, and joy and all these different things that we're still trying to to grab hold of can be because they can simply go within, know they're one and complete in Christ, nothing lacking, and receive anything they need for this life. And then there's no read for for external wars, etc. So hopefully it helps, guys. I really just wanted to get the fear out of people, and I've been getting a lot of these emails, so I just thought this would be a good week to do it, and uh, we'll go from there. So God bless you guys. We'll see you here later today.